I imagine some members of the Kit Guru audience watched my review of the Fractal Design Pop Air case and thought, interesting name, good set of features, low price. I like it, but I want something a bit smaller. Well, good news. Fractal Design has you covered with the Pop Mini Air, which is micro ATX rather than ATX and is a couple of inches shorter and lower. Or if you prefer metric rather than imperial, about 60 mil in both dimensions. Same width, however. Let's see how those two cases compare. A swift recap about Fractal Design Pop. A series of cases, this Mini is the Micro ATX, the Pop is ATX, the XL is E-ATX. They have a great deal in common, many shared features across the range. When you look at fan support, both the Pop and the Pop Mini can accommodate two 120s in the front, two 120s in the roof. However, when you look at 140 millimeter fans, the Pop can accommodate two at the front or two in the roof where the Mini can only accommodate a single 140 in the front and in the roof. I'm not saying that's a big limitation, but that is the fundamental difference between this case and the Pop, other than the obvious fact this is Micro ATX and the Pop is ATX. Pricing of both the Pop Mini and the Pop, the same. Let's pull off a few panels. So the glass panel, two thumb screws, comes back, lifts away. Back panel. lifts off. It's a different mechanism. It drops over and slides rather than engaging in holes. Results the same. Magnetic filter on the top and we have a dust filter for the power supply. The power supply shroud is fixed in place. Unlike the pop, there is a small opening at the front so you can drop a cooler down there. 240 mil or 140, so a 240 AO either in the front or the roof is an option. In the accessories, you get very few with this case, just as with the pop, you get this small pack of extended radiator brackets which allow you to offset the rad in the roof to clear your ram, should you feel the need. Around the back, as with the pop, we have a great many drive bays. Two SSD mounts there, bracket comes away. And can be moved to the power supply shroud, should you wish. You can buy an accessory bracket for no great money. And now you can install two SSDs there and two on the power supply shroud. And we have, as with the pop, a pair of drive sleds in the floor of the case. One secures to the floor of the case and one to the underside of the power supply shroud. And there you can install either another two and a half inch SSD or a full size three and a half inch hard drive. So you could potentially install six two and a half inch SATA SSDs or laptop drives in this case, or a couple of full size hard drives and four SSDs. If you don't buy the accessory bracket, there are two SATA SSDs and two full size hard drives, which I think for a micro ATX case is remarkable. Around the front, we have the same familiar magnetically retained cover. And there we have a little caddy for bits and pieces. Little storage unit. Pull off the front panel. Mesh front, no separate dust filter. So we'll be using a vacuum cleaner to keep that clean. We have two fans supplied with the case at the front. They're RGB voltage controls and not PWM, maximum speed 1200 RPM, and a third fan of the same at the rear. If you buy the non-RGB version of this case, they are non-RGB fans, but the spec is the same. As with the pop, we remove this bracket. So 
So as with the POP, you can install one or two optical drives or combination of optical drives, full-size hard drives, SSDs, and of course M.2 storage on your motherboard. It really does seem that Fractal Design uh, has decided to put a huge emphasis on storage options. My guess would be that they don't think for a second anybody's going to install eight drives in a, a case like this. It's that it doesn't cost them any great deal amount of money to do this. Options are good and it makes this case stand out from the herd. The one thing you cannot do in terms of storage with the Mini versus the Pop is you cannot put one of these three and a half inch drive mounts there and you will see the reason is because this case is shorter than the pop which after was one of the selling points if you were to put a mount there you'd be completely blocking the cable management slot but other than that the pop mini has most of the features of the pop front io panel which is on the top of the case is quite basic so you've got usb 3.0 type a's you've got a blanked off type c audio jack and also power and RGB buttons because you can run the RGB fans off this button by linking the fans to this header here. Let us remove this blank because I do want to put USB type C in this build. And then we take the accessory, which costs less than a tenner. And now we have USB Type-C as well as Type-A. Let's just demonstrate the daisy chaining of the fans. We plug it in to the header in the roof of the case. Now the three fans are controlled by the RGB button on the front I.O. And I think I'll leave it like that to see how well that hardware control works in practice. For the test PC, the motherboard is this Micro ATX MSI Mag B550M mortar. Processor is an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. SSD is Sabrent Rocket 4.0. We've got 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 3600. CPU cooler, Noctua NHU12A Chromax Black. Yes, Quentin, that should keep you happy. Power supply, Seasonic Focus PX850, so platinum rated 850 watts. Graphics card, Palette RTX 3080 Gaming Pro. A decent PC but not quite as insane as a full-on Core i9-12900K. So the case has a reasonable chance. Still, quite a lot of hardware going in there. PC assembled. Plenty of space inside. If you wanted to put an optical drive in the front, hard drive there, SSD on the back. I don't see why not. It's compact, but it's not silly tight in there. Impressive. Right, let's put some panels on. Let's hope the RGB lights it up and makes it a little bit less black hole. Before we get into thermals and my views on the Pop Mini Air, let's just have a quick look at the RGB, which as I mentioned is controlled off the button on the front header as opposed to by software in this configuration that I've chosen. forgotten how many options there are. Oh, right, okay, rainbow marquee, and then we're back around again. Perfectly acceptable, nothing super special. The lighting in the hubs looks okay. Having settled on a color, let's choose a mode. That should keep you entertained while I talk about fan noise, cooling, and my overall impressions of the Pop Mini Air. And bringing up the lights to normal, just so you can get a proper impression of the RGB on the fans. 
bright enough, no problems. I ran the fans in three configurations. So the case fans have a maximum speed of 1200 RPM and the Noctua fans got to 2000 RPM. I started by running the fans at 800 RPM, all five of them, and it sounded like this. Then I increased fan speed to 1200 RPM, so the case fans are flat out, the Noctuas are running just above half speed, sounded like this. And finally increased the fans to full speed, so the case fans to 1200 RPM, the Noctua is now at 2000, sounded like this. Yep, starting to get a bit rackety towards the end there. However, as you can see, the front of the case is open. We have uh, an open top panel, albeit with a magnetic filter in place, and the back is fairly well ventilated. Not surprising, it can get noisy when you crank up the fans. Thermal performance, how does the Pop Mini Air perform? We've got a Ryzen 5 5600X, which is a low powered six core processor, and we have an RTX 3080 graphics card, which is a very juicy GPU. Running a combination simultaneously of Cinebench R23 and Time Spy stress test, the system was drawing 460, 470 watts at the wall socket. The vast majority of that power going to the GPU, which is drawing just under 300 watts. The CPU, by contrast, 78 watts at 4.1 or so gigahertz all cores. Let's start with the fans running at 800 RPM, ambient temperature 23 degrees. And we see a CPU temperature of 65 and a GPU temperature of 80. Increasing fan speed to 1200 RPM for all the fans, the CPU temperature drops to 60 and the GPU temperature drops 1 degree to 79. Ramping up the Noctua fans to full speed, so they're at 2000 RPM, the CPU temperature drops a mere 1 degree to 59, GPU temperature increases slightly to 81 and I suspect these two fans at that huge speed are affecting airflow over the graphics card. However, the case comes through with reasonably decent flying colours, CPU temperature is okay, GPU temperature is also fine. In conclusion, what do I think of the Fractal Design Pop Mini Air RGB? Overall, very favourable. If you have your doubts about Micro ATX, common sense says you go for the full size Pop. It's ATX, gives you slightly more options, of course it takes up slightly more space. In terms of cost, there's nothing to choose between the two. So Micro ATX, it's for the aficionados. That's just a given. This is not an argument about ATX versus Micro ATX. Pros, the positive points. You get a large number of storage options. I said the same about the Pop. It's also true here. One fewer drives in a case that's a fair amount smaller. Very impressive work, Fractal. It supports two optical drives. As I said previously, this is not a feature of interest to me. However, I know some members of the KitGuru audience are interested in optical drives. Please comment below why, how you use optical drives. It's a puzzle to me. I would like to be informed. The case is supplied with three ARGB fans. Works perfectly well. If you buy this case with these fans, you're going to use them. Therefore, the RGB must be a factor in your buying decision. And it has a decent price. I would like to see it slightly cheaper. I would like to see the Micro ATX cheaper than the ATX. Common sense says slightly fewer materials, must be slightly cheaper to ship. But in the great scheme of things, what are we talking about? Maybe five pounds at best? Cons, the negative points. The AIO cooling options are limited. Basically a 240 AIO is pretty much all you can do. The Aspect 12 fans are voltage controlled rather than PWM. Clearly that's a cost thing. I like PWM, I do not like voltage control. And the USB Type-C on the front IO costs extra. Again, that's down to cost. Again, it's understandable. At least it is available as an option. Overall, I'm saying eight and a half out of 10 and worth buying.